Hello, and welcome to the next installment of the System C video training series from Forte Design Systems. Today we're going to learn how to take these System C designs and test benches we've been creating and compile and run them in an actual simulation. Now last time we took a basic System C test bench and added some important capabilities to it. Namely, a pass-fail criteria that took a generated output results file and compared it to golden data with a make rule, a way to measure and print the latency and throughput of the design, and the addition of a guard condition to prevent a hanging or runaway simulation. So now that we have a mature design and test bench implemented with a full two-way handshake, let's get down to actually running it. As we said early on, System C is a C++ class library, so it can be compiled with a C compiler. There are many C compilers out there, but the one most commonly used with System C is the GNU C compiler, or GCC. Just about any workstation will have GCC installed on it. If you want to see where GCC is installed on your workstation, just enter which GCC on the command line like this, and if it's present, the path to GCC will be returned. Chances are it will be located in the slash user slash bin directory like this. Now if we're going to use GCC to compile our System C source code, we'll have to provide it with some information in the form of switches and command line arguments. First, when GCC compiles the System C source, the resulting output will be a simulation executable, which is what you would run on the command line to perform the simulation. That executable should have a name, and you can provide that name using the minus O switch in GCC. Next, you need to list out the source file names of your system C, that being the .cc files for our design, test bench, and top-level main function. Now, in order to compile your source code, GCC needs to know where to find all these files. It needs to know where your design.cc files are located, and since they include the systemc.h header file, it needs to know where the system C installation is. The minus I switch is how you can specify all the different location paths for those files. Finally, System C and C++ come with library archive files that you'll need to link into your simulation. The minus L switch is where you specify the location of these archives. Then, you can just list out all the archives you want to link in using minus lowercase l switches. So let's see how a GCC command would look for the first System C project we've been working on in these videos. What I'm going to show you is a single GCC command. I'm just going to show it to you a line at a time for instructional clarity. At the command line prompt, you start with GCC, and as we said, the first thing we need is a simulation executable name. I'm going to call the executable main, so I add a minus O main switch like this. Next, we need the source file names, so I list out the top level main.cc file, the fur design file fur.cc, and the test bench file tb.cc. Now we want to tell GCC where everything is, so since the source files are all in the local directory, I'm going to add a minus i dot switch like this. Dot means local, so this just tells GCC to look in the local directory for the source files. Next, we need to tell GCC where the systemc header files are. Now when you install systemc, there's an environment variable called systemc that gets defined, and it points to the systemc installation directory. The systemc header files are in a subdirectory there called include. So for GCC, we'll add a switch minus i dollar systemc slash include. Dollar systemc will just inline the installation path variable, and then GCC will know to look in the include directory over there for the systemc.h file and all the other files it includes. Then the last thing to do is link in the library archives. The archive file we need for system C is called libsystemc.a, and it's located at $systemc slash lib linux64, which we point to with the minus L switch you see here. On some systems, it may be the lib linux directory, but I'm running on a 64 bit machine, so for me it's lib linux64. Then we link in the archives we want. Linking works this way. If you want to pull in an archive called libx.a, you specify minus lx on the command line, just minus l followed by the archive name without the lib prefix. So for libsystemc.a, we add a minus l systemc. For the underlying C++ classes in systemc, I also want to link to the standard C++ archive, which is minus l std C++, and also the math library archive, which is minus lm. These are the three archives any systemc compilation will need. 
So over on my desktop, I've already written out this GCC command with the switches and arguments I just showed you. I'll hit enter and the GCC command will run. It'll include the specified directories and link in the archives and compile and generate a simulation executable. It returns, and if we look in the local directory contents, we see that a new main executable has been produced. I can then run the actual simulation by entering dot slash and the name of our executable main. And by the way, dot slash is usually required on most systems in order to run a local executable. And if I hit enter, there you see the simulation run all the way through to completion. And here's the output and latency and throughput calculations printed to the screen, like we learned earlier with test benches. Now you may have noticed that the pass-fail status did not print to the screen. Remember, in the previous video, we did that with a make rule called compare result. And that's obviously part of the make file and not part of this compiled simulation executable I just ran. Now typing out this long GCC command every time we want to run a simulation is obviously not the way you want to use System C. Remember in the previous videos, whenever I ran a simulation, I just entered make on the command line and everything was done for me. I'll do it again real quick. And you can see this time when I use make, the simulation is run followed by the pass fail status. So let's finish up here by learning how to consolidate running GCC and the compare result rule into the make file. I'll open up make file and we'll take a look at the rules and setup. Now when you type make and nothing else on the command line, by default it's the very first defined rule in the make file that is run. And as you can see here, there are some variables defined and the very first rule is this one called all. All first runs a command, which is dot slash followed by this variable tests, and then the command make compare result. And right above here, you see the variable tests is defined as main. So this is what actually happens when you type make. The main executable is run, which performs the simulation, and the compare result make rule that we learned about in the previous video is run to determine and print pass fail status. Now something that we didn't learn about before is what you see here, the tests variable on the same line as the rule right after the colon. In make rule syntax, this is what's called a dependency. And what that means is whenever anything changes in that dependency, the involved commands or compilations are all rerun. This way, the make file will not be recompiling everything every time a rule is run. If the files are all unchanged and up to date, it'll just run the executable that already exists. Now a dependency can be a list of files or it can be another make rule, as is the case here. So through the tests variable, which we saw was defined as main, the all rule just inherits the same dependencies as main. Where is the main rule defined? Right below here with this tests rule. Now there's some reasonably advanced make syntax here that makes use of automatic variables, so let's step through it. First, like we learned earlier, anything after the colon is a dependency. And as you see, we've defined that with a variable called dependency. Up above, dependency is defined first as makefile, then the variable headers, which see here is fur.h and tb.h, and the variable sources, which here is main.cc, fur.cc, and tb.cc. So whenever any of these files are edited, all compilations in the main and in turn the all rule will be rerun. Then the actual rule, as you can see, is the GCC command followed by switches, which are a mix of variables and direct definitions. The first switch, minus G, tells GCC to create a debuggable executable, one that can be processed by a debugger like GDB. The next switch is minus O, which we just learned names the executable, and the name will be the automatic variable $at, which just takes the name of the rule, which is of course main. Then here the variable sources, which we saw was all the .cc files, and then include dirs, which we see up here are the minus i switches for the local and systemc installation directories. Then there's the minus l switch pointing to lib dirs, which is defined here as the systemc installation slash lib dash, and then this systemc architecture variable, which I can define as Linux or Linux 64. Remember, depending on whether you're running a 32 or 64 bit machine. Finally, the linked archive is this libs variable, which here is defined as the list of minus lowercase l terms that we learned already. That's it. I can type make or make all on the command line, and the GCC command will be run as we defined it, followed by the compare result rule. 
Now there's one other useful rule I want to show you, and that's this clean rule you see here. It's always handy to have a clean rule which will delete any executables or extraneous output files from a simulation run so that you can quickly get your directory back to a fresh state where it has just the source code and makefile. See here we just declare the rule clean with no dependencies and define it as removing tests, meaning we want to remove the main simulation executable, and star.dat, which will remove the output.dat output results file that gets generated when a simulation is run. All right. So let's exit makefile, and I'll run these rules to illustrate what they're really doing. First, let's clean the directory by running make clean. See the action of the rule was to remove main and output.dat. Then we can type make and return, and the all rule is executed, which runs the GCC command, builds the main executable, runs it, and concludes by running the compare result rule and printing the pass fail status. So let's review what we've done here. We took some fully developed System C design and test bench files and compiled them into a simulation executable using the GCC GNU C compiler. We learned what to provide GCC for a successful simulation, an executable name, the location directories of the source and System C include files, and the location of the System C library and archives we wanted to link. We then made the simulation easier to run by absorbing the GCC command into a makefile, where we learned about rule dependencies and variables, and defined useful rules to compile and run the simulation, compare results, and clean the project directory. We hope you found this video series was a good introduction to System C high-level design and verification. To take the next step and turn your System C designs into synthesized hardware, we invite you to watch the introductory synthesizer videos found right here on the Forte Design Systems YouTube channel. And as always, we welcome your ideas and suggestions for more videos. On behalf of everyone at Forte Design Systems, thanks, and we'll see you in another video series real soon.